very good morning students today we are going to discuss about the general theory of distribution that is the marginal productivity theory of distribution so this theory has been primarily developed with reference to labor but what is true for labor that is also true for other factors of production like land capital and organization so how much should be each factor of production be paid what factors should be taken into account while distributing the national dividend among the factors of production the answer was given by the classical economists with the help of the marginal productivity theory of distribution what is the basic content of the marginal productivity theory of distribution according to this theory wages are based upon an entrepreneur's estimate of the value that will probably be produced by the last or marginal worker once again i will repeat the hint of the theory according to this theory wages are based upon an entrepreneur's estimate of the value that will be probably produced by the last or marginal workers and before going to discuss about this theory so i would like to share uh, some of the popular definitions given by the marginal productivity theory of uh, distribution so the first one in the words of uh, jb clark a very famous economist under static conditions that means under given conditions every factor including entrepreneur would get a remuneration equal to marginal product whatever he gets that is equal to the marginal product so one more definition is given here as per mark block the marginal productivity theory contains that in equilibrium each productive agent will be rewarded in accordance with its marginal productivity so finally come to the conclusion the reward is given according to the marginal productivity of that factor of production so this is the very interesting theory so come to the next point uh, just like uh, any other theories of uh, economics uh, this theory is also based upon a few important assumptions uh, what are the important assumptions the first one is completely static society so that means uh, no change in uh, population uh, capital and technology uh, everything remains the same that means under given conditions only uh, this theory is possible so no change in population there is no increase or decrease in population uh, whatever the capital available to the entrepreneur that remains the same and there is no technological advancement improvement the technology also remains the same and the second very interesting uh, assumption is perfect competition in the factor market so there is perfect competition in factor market and in commodity market there is perfect competition there is no imperfect uh, competition so the one more interesting uh, assumption is given here perfect mobility of labor and capital so the factors of production they are freely mobile between different regions and employment marginal productivity of a factor unit will be the same in all occupations and in all uh, employment uh, possibilities that means there is a perfect mobility of labor and capital they are easily mobile from one place to another place and come to the one more important assumption labor homogeneity that means homogeneous homogeneous means what uniform that means same or identical so what it means all the units of a factor are equally efficient or interchangeable all the units of factor get the same remuneration is based on this assumption that means they are they remains the same homogeneity of factors of production this is a very interesting uh, assumption and next one perfect substitution between labor and Uh, capital substitution of one factor for another is possible so that the production can be increased or decreased uh, this is necessary so that marginal productivity can be found out by increasing or decreasing the quantities of the factors of production in case of the scarcity of one factor we have to substitute another that to maintain the same uh, level of production 
and the final one marginal productivity of labor will decrease as more laborers are employed or marginal productivity of labor will increase as less laborers are employed. Once again I will repeat the last one that is a very interesting uh, assumption marginal productivity of labor that is MPL will decrease uh, as we apply more and more of laborers or the marginal productivity of labor will increase as we employ less and less laborers are employed. So, on the basis of uh, uh, these all assumptions, uh, uh, let us try to understand the very interesting theory of marginal productivity of theory of distribution. And before going to explain the theory with the help of diagram, let us know the meaning of uh, marginal productivity, what it means. So, the question arises what is meant by marginal productivity of a factor? The marginal productivity of a factor means the addition made to the total production by the employment of one more unit of that factor uh, which is the entrepreneur thinks worthwhile employing it. Once again I will repeat the value of the additional output must be equal to the price paid for the service of that factor. In other words, the entrepreneur employs various factors and pays uh, each factor a reward which is just equal to the contribution made by each of them. Therefore, the marginal productivity that means payment made to each factor just equal to the value of additional made to the total output. Once again I will repeat. So, marginal productivity means the value of the additional output must be equal to the price paid for the service of that factor. So, this is explained with the help of uh, given below diagram. See here on OX axis quantity of labor is given and on OY axis that is marginal productivity or price or wage rate is given. So, MP in this figure MP is the marginal productivity curve. Once again I will repeat on OX quantity of labor is given and on OY marginal productivity or price or wage rate is given. So, the curve given here that curve is known as MP curve marginal productivity curve. Let us start at OW wage rate or price the quantity of the labor employed is OL at that level of employment marginal productivity is equal to wage rate that is LD is equal to OW. Once again I will repeat so at OW wage rate the quantity of the labor employed is OL at that level of employment marginal productivity that is equal to wage rate or price that is LD is equal to OW. Suppose what happens if the more of the factor is employed? Yeah. Take for example uh, OL2 the marginal productivity will that is uh, uh, applied that means it will be D2 L2 which is less than the wage rate or price that is OW. So, therefore, the entrepreneur loses by employing more than OL. That means if he employ more of quantity of labor take for example L2 then definitely so uh, that is equal to D2 L2 marginal productivity is equal to D2 L2. So, uh, loses by employing more than L. Suppose what happens if less is employed? If less of that factor is employed say OL1 the productivity will rise. The productivity will rise and it will be D1 L1 which is higher than the price OW. So, here he earns profit. So, three conditions are given OL quantity of labor then the marginal productivity is DL and wage rate is uh, OW. If we employ more of labor L2 then what happens the marginal productivity is due T2 L2 that is less than OW wage rate of price. If we employ less of labor that is OL1 then definitely the marginal productivity increases to D1 L1 here benefit, benefit is there for entrepreneur. 
So, uh, this is about the marginal productivity theory of distribution which is explained with the help of a diagram. And come to the point, uh, what are the uh, unrealistic uh, assumptions? The theory is criticized on the basis of the given grounds here, uh, factors are not perfect substitutes. Just we discussed in assumption that uh, substitution is possible. But actually factors are not uh, perfectly uh, substitute. And second one, uh, law of proportion return is applicable, sometimes it is not applicable. Wage cuts does not determine on the basis of demand. Difficulty in the measurement of marginal productivity, withdrawal of factor, factor units cannot be raised. So, static theory, uh, as we assumed that the things are remains the same, uh, population, technology, these all things are remains the same. But in practical life, uh, these all things are not possible. And uh, if take for example, we assumed that uh, the theory is uh, based upon uh, perfect competition in a factor market. In practical life, uh, nothing is perfect, uh, imperfect is there. Uh, this is one more important drawback than perfect mobility of labor and capital we assumed. But in practical life there is imperfect mobility of uh, labor and capital. It is highly impossible or easy to mobile uh, capital and labor from one place to another place. According to Adam Smith, labor is a difficult sort of luggage to transfer from one place to another place. So, one more interesting assumption is given here, labor is homogeneous and it is highly impossible in practical life. Labor units differ from uh, one person to another uh, person. Some are more efficient and others are less efficient. So, perfect substitution between labor and capital. So, it is also not possible in a practical life. So, these all are the very interesting uh, criticisms raised by other economists. So, come to the conclu conclusion boys and girls. Uh, despite of these all defects, the theory contains an element of truth. Because we know that every factor should be paid according to the productivity only. Uh, but the modern economists have discarded this theory as unrealistic and practically useless. In its place, they have framed their own theory and uh, introduced few more theories. So, this theory is uh, very, very important from the examination point of view. Actually, this theory uh, given for long question. Okay, go through these all things. See you in the next session. Take care.